Why should replacing Spring Valley Lake's current CSA counting service area be placed on the back burner? Well, Terry, there's, there's a group of volunteers that have looked at replacing CSA 64 uh, with a new CSD, Community Services District. Uh, if that were to go through in LAFCO, which is Local Agency Formation Commission, if they were to approve that, and there's a lot of hurdles that need to go through, it would be put on the ballot the earliest to be November of 2020. I've recently attended two open forums that the committee put on. Uh, one was on, a, uh, on October 2nd and one was on November 16th. Uh, there was a businessman that, that was there. I'm, I'm not going to use his name because I, I don't have his permission. Uh, that, that I know and I have a lot of respect for. And at the October 2nd meeting, uh, this businessman reminded us that the country club is a huge asset and, it's, and we have some problems. Uh, our lake is one of our greatest assets. And we've had problems, you know, Terry, I hate to say this, but for 45 years, so I just reread the history of Spring Valley Lake that was written by Scotty. I can't think of Scotty's last name. He's since passed. He owned the first house, I think, on Pebble Beach. But he wrote a book, and they discovered that the lake was having problems five years after Spring Valley Lake was open. Now, Spring Valley Lake was open on October 25th of 1969, according to our great friend Bob Shear, who is founder of Shear Realty. Uh, so when this person said the other night, you know, let's take care of the golf course first. Let's take care of the lake second. Then let's look at the CSD. To kind of back up, um, about two, two weeks ago, I posted a video that you had helped put together. And we talked about this. And, and, and there were some things that I brought to light that were very disconcerting in the report. So I've looked at all the financials. Um, I've, I've had meetings with the trash people, with, with Colbert, with Vertec, and with Sheila Bath. Um, we have had multiple email exchanges with county officials, questions and answers. And at the end of the day, I couldn't find anything compelling to say to anybody, say to you or any of my friends, yeah, I think we should do this. So let's back up. There, there was a, a misnomer in a post by one of the committee members uh, that's pro, and, and, and that's great. I mean, we live in the greatest country in the world, and we should have our opinion. That posted and said that I was probably a little upset that I wasn't a part of this committee. Well, uh, as, as I went back through, and we've got the box of, of emails, uh, there, there were emails back in 08 and 09 with Jim Carr and Larry Hoover and myself to talk to Kimberly Cox, and they had a, a recently created one out in Hellendale. Uh, I'm proud of the one out in Hellendale. My, my uncle Phil finished building Silver Lakes for, for McCullough. There was Charlie Johnson out in Phelan who had their CSD that, that was gone. And we reached out, and, and we couldn't gain any traction. So we never actually met, contrary to what this person wanted to post. And they ultimately took the post down because they, I don't think they look very good. And then the second thing that when I questioned the salaries, uh, they, 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 they said that I didn't quite get it right. So unfortunately, I had to reach out to my friend Steve Garcia, who I just I have a ton of respect for. Uh, Steve is the chairman of the group. And on Saturday before the November 16th meeting, I had to send him a formal letter and say, Steve, I think that the committee member that said that, you're, that, they, that the salaries that I was saying were really high came from this, from, from this document. Uh, and, and where it was in this document was this piece of paper. So I noted that on page. So that committee member that's watching this will probably say, wow, yeah, I guess that Joe knows what he's doing. Uh, this came from page 105 of the June 18th feasibility study and executive. And what it shows that they want to hire a general manager for 150000 a water manager for hundred grand, a sewer manager for hundred grand, and nine administrative people for fifty thousand dollars each, plus a forty percent override. You know, with with, yeah. with with overhead. You know, Terry, I wish I could pay my great administrative staff fifty thousand dollars a year. I don't know anybody that can do that. So, I'm concerned about we don't need to spend this money. CSA 64 has has done well. Uh, on the posts that we posted on out there, there were 45 comments. Uh, Ninety-nine percent were very civil. There were two comments that that disagreed, which which was okay. But there were 43 people that said, "I agree with what Mr. Brady is saying that we don't need we don't need this change." So what I'm asking the CSD committee is, in light of what we have recently seen with with what Club Corp has said and the issues with our country club, and while there was a, a private meeting recently with with a representative uh, Phil Steitska or Steika who's a regional manager with some of the Spring Valley board members, let's again go back to taking care of the country club and see how the country club could work in a viable manner with 
the association. Joseph W. Brady also describes a way to prevent or avoid possible conflict of interest involving proponents of replacing CSA 64 with a CSD. Well, I, I think that, you know, the, 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 you know my, my dad always told me before he passed away in politics, always follow the money. So about, uh, about nine months ago, I noticed on one of the, the – so, so the committee, that's the proponents, okay, and, and they have the right to be the proponents. We want them to have the right to be the proponents. Uh, put out their minutes, and on one of their minutes, it showed some contributions. So one from a laboratory of, you know, 150 bucks, but one from a gentleman, I think his name was Mike Woods, for $2,500. I thought, well, that's – why would somebody give a newly created committee $2,500 unless there was some type of expectation of, of something? Um, and then people would say, well, wait a minute, Brady, you've raised a lot of money for a lot of candidates, and you raised a lot of money for your own. Yeah, I raised in, in, th in three campaigns for $180,000 for the college. Terry, I, I can't get your, 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 your child a grade. I can't get him to the front of the class. I can't. There's nothing I can do for him except to set policy and be sure that we hire the right president, superintendent, that we all work in in policy. Can't you so, get my son a scholarship for no, the voting? <laughs> no, but I, I think that I think we're, we're part of the issue comes and and I had talked to Steve Garcia about this months ago. Would those people that are proponents to this that that are on the committee? Would they sign an agreement that says they wouldn't run for the board and they wouldn't take a position within the CSD? So where that came from, when I came here 30 years ago or 31 years ago, uh, people like Robert Lovingood and, and, and Brad Orchard and a lot of us got together and we were really behind economic development. People said the reason that Brady is, is professing economic development and we helped create three, three economic development committees was I want to do real estate deals. So Terry, you know how we took care of that? We all signed an agreement that said we could never do a real estate deal with anybody that we had anything to do with there. So then they thought, well, well why were we doing that? Well, why do people volunteer at their church? And why do people volunteer? So I have said to Steve, you know, would people on the committee, because there have been some. So, for instance, last week after the first video came out and there were these posts on the Spring Valley Lake Citizens Group, which, which I, I, I really want to thank the Verhagens, both Lisa and Dennis. Are, they're gracious people. They're very professional. Uh, this is not a personal thing. Uh, we think differently about this, but they've always been friends. And um, from, from the time I originally supported them in, in their first election, which some people didn't like, uh, we, we've always been friends. But the, 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 the issue of potential conflicts has become pretty clear. Some person wrote a post, and it's on Facebook, and it's on their, it's on their, 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 their Facebook site, that talked about the connections of everybody between the Country Club Board and the Spring Valley Lake Association and the CSD Board and friends and spouses and all that and the conflicts. Well, if a person who I don't know, and I didn't recognize their name, um, and I did respond back, uh, and I said that that I thought the same thing. If other people are seeing that that are not, you know, they're they're not people of, of name or they're not people that we'd recognize, then how do other people see this? So, you know, I have suggested, you know, to some of the people that that are involved, that maybe separate yourself out. Again, let's get back to our core. Let's take care of our country club. Okay, I stand on the board of governors. Um, it didn't do anything. It was really a, more of a function of what Club Corp wants. Why don't we really sit down and have that real conversation with Club Corp? Okay, I've, I've corresponded with Dave Pillsbury, their chairman. I've written him a six-page letter. It was pretty clear back, back in July. Um, I think that they, I think Club Corp could, could cause a great amount of, of economic harm to our association, whether you live on the golf course or not. So take care of the golf course. Let's really figure out. I know that Paul Stan is apparently doing a great job, and I believe Paul, and I like Paul, and I have no reason not to believe that they're not making progress. But in 06, 07, 08, we had the same problem with the lake, and I was always told as chairman it was 18 months out, and that was, you know, 13 or 14 years ago. So, you know, I, I want to support Paul and, and that lake committee. I know they've worked really hard to figure out what this problem is. Let's take care of our core assets. Let's not be out trying to create CSDs. And at the right time, I think, I think that hopefully this will bring the community together, hopefully. And I would really, I would, I would profess that, and I would reach out to anybody on the committee and say, let's figure out how we can work together. But let's not get this CSD so far out ahead. Let's try to save our country club, which is one of our greatest assets, and our lake. And then, and then sit down and see, maybe we go back to the county and negotiate better deals because we are the 800-pound gorilla. There's 100 CSDs. And we are the biggest one, 
and within the next two weeks or so, we'll be getting the data from them on exactly where we rank. And in one of my future videos, we can talk about, you know, are we the 800-pound gorilla, and does the county need us? Um, I, I don't think the county needs us, but I think it, it's nice that they would want to keep us. So.